Classic Movie Fans, Rick Nine G here. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest. It's an absolutely amazing film, arguably one of his best films of all time. I'm going to talk to you about a really cool decades old secret about this film in which I participate in. It was such an honor to be able to to be present in the form of this history. I'll tell you all about it right now. I don't really want to spoil the movie, but I do want to tell you a little bit about it before I connect the history and tell you about this fascinating filming secret. That is used in other movies and television shows, but I mean, this is one which is going to blow your mind. Now, when we talk about this movie, we talk about Cary Grant playing the character of Roger Thornhill. Now, he finds himself thrust into the world of spies when he's mistaken for a man by the name of George Kaplan. So Thornhill is known to be Mr. Kaplan. Now, a foreign spy, Philip Van Damme, and his henchman, Leonard, try to eliminate him, but when Thornhill, who's a real guy, tries to make sense of the case, he is framed for murder. Now, on the run from the police, he manages to board the 20th Century Limited bound for Chicago, which he meets a beautiful blonde, and the character's name is Eve. Now, she helps to evade the authorities. She helps him. His world is turned upside down yet again when he learns that eve isn't the innocent woman that he thought she was not everything is as it seems however leading to this dramatic rescue and escape on the top of mount rushmore and that's exactly what i want to talk about now mount rushmore now you may think this is something where you're going to zip across the united states to film well, not exactly. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock was a very smart man. I'm not going to go into all the history and complexities of filming in South Dakota and how this would have worked, but I do tell you that Hitchcock took a few shortcuts, and I'm going to tell you about the shortcuts mostly here. Now, let's look at these couple scenes that I'm pointing out at you, one being the restaurant where we see Cary Grant, Eva, Eve Marie Saint, and they are here filming this mock-up scene where he is going to be shot. Now in the background, outside the windows of the restaurant, you see Mount Rushmore, I mean, in all its beautiful glory. But wait, how did they film this in South Dakota? I mean, did Hitchcock just happen to go to a restaurant who outlooks this beautiful Mount Rushmore building? Well, it's not as easy as that, or maybe more complicated than you think, but he took a shortcut and that is he used a backdrop. Now, before I get to that, let me show you the scene from the forest in which Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint are in the forest uh, with the station wagon, and they're kind of on opposite ends of the forest here. Now, let me show you. Everything that's in the frame here is inside a sound stage. The forest is completely fake. The trees are completely fake. The ground, and yes, that is not really Mount Rushmore. It's a backdrop. Not only that, it is the backdrop that I was able to see in person. It is not just a five to six feet backdrop. It is in fact 36, almost 36 feet tall and super wide and concave. I'm gonna show you images of myself in front of the exact backdrop. This is not a recreation. This was actually in North by Northwest. This is how all these shots were accomplished without even having to put the actors right in front of Mount Rushmore. Now, even during the complicated scenes when they're fighting and all this brawl ensues on top of Mount Rushmore, they built different little scale models, smaller versions of, let's say, Abraham Lincoln's nose, his cheek, and they were climbing all over that. They weren't really on top of these Mount Rushmore structures. It's all in a Hollywood soundstage, really, really cool. But for me, I mean, look at this. Up close, you can see just the paint strokes. This was hand painted by artists. And the fact that it was so detailed that you back up and it looks real and put into this movie, it looks real. I mean, even if you look at the backdrop with me in it, I mean, it's age, right? It's over 50 years old, but you may think, okay, it looks pretty real, but what counted was how real did it look for the film? And it looked absolutely amazing. A lot of you might look at this film and think, wait, this was real? This was in South Dakota? Nope, inside a sound stage in Los Angeles, California, and added on to that, Rick Nig visited it, so that is so awesome. You can go look at this and other really cool attractions at the Academy Museum in Los Angeles, California. I'll show you a couple images of what it looks like, but primarily what it looked like 
back in the day when it was known as the May Company or the Macy Company building right in the corner of Wilshire and Fairfax. Such a historic building. So glad there's so much Hollywood memorabilia here. I will be visiting again. Thank you so much for your support. I mean, this is the type of video that I love making and I love making the connections actually going there and visiting this place for you. Thank you so much. If you enjoy videos like this, please continue supporting the channel by hitting the thumbs up button and by subscribing if you haven't done so. I know a lot of you maybe watch many of my videos but have not subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? It helps me so much and it's absolutely free so it costs you nothing to subscribe and to support the channel. It's the only way I can keep making videos like this. We'll see you all next time and don't forget everyone. Be hopeful. Thank you so much to everyone who supports my work on Patreon. David D, Sally N, Gerard D, Greg S, Ricky, Citizen Kane 359, Kevin K, and Vito L. If you want to appear on this list, don't forget to look at the Patreon description in the link below. Thank you.